What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. We are going to talk about 6.2, update 6.2 we're gonna go through. I've got a whole list of notes here regarding everything that's gonna be coming and involved with the 6.2 update. There's gonna be a lot of very welcome changes with this update, some quality of life improvements, things like that, streamlining some things within the game, um, as well as some new events on the horizon and all of the above. So we are going to take a look at everything. We're gonna get you guys caught up to speed. So I hope you guys stick around for this whole video. We can get you guys all of the information you're gonna need moving forward. Forward. Welcome back, guys. All right, we are going to start at the top of the list and we are going to work our way down. I've got my notes here off to the side on my other monitor. So we are going to walk through this and I'm going to take you guys through everything that is coming with the 6.2 update. All right, starting out, we are going to have the Lunar New Year trip. All right, this is going to be a new spin on an old event. We've got our board here, right? We've got our dice, our roadblock, hot air balloon. Um, you guys are very familiar, most of you guys anyway, unless you're uh, a brand new player or familiar with this event, you guys are going to be able to earn dice through bunkers. You can purchase dice, of course, things like that. You guys are going to be able to make your way around the board, get some of these items you see, as well as some, um, you know, items if you land on these corners that are going to be kind of exclusive items, so to speak. So I'll take you guys through the board here and we will see what we've got in the percentages of drop rates on these items. So you guys can see we've got some refined component materials, Air Force refined component materials. Um, same idea here, golden statue, officer statue, same thing, refined component material. And then here as well, more refined components, coupons, drink tokens, etc., etc. Um, and then, like I said, you guys are going to be able to get these dice, roadblock, hot air balloons through some daily stuff. These are going to be the rewards that you guys are going to be able to get through this event, depending on how many times around the board that you guys are going to make it. So you guys are going to be able to get this base decoration, um, Van Brewer, uh, some, some coupons at 80, you're going to be able to get, uh, an exclusive, uh, avatar, uh, or a profile picture frame couple of refined components depending on how far you make it here and then possibly a superior universal material moving on um, we are going to have um, something called red packets uh, you can wish your friends good fortune in this spring festival by sending them red packets um, I assume that's probably going to be in line with the Christmas event that just took place where you guys are going to be able to purchase um, the, the gifts to be able to send items to anybody within your alliance of your choosing. Um, and then there is going to be an usher in the new year event. That is going to be here, right here. This is going to be like what we just had for the Christmas event. You guys are going to be able to collect these plane tickets here. Um, obviously through Raven bunkers, collecting resources, airdrops, and then also by purchasing items in the black market. So each ticket you get, um, is going to allow you as you get the minimum tickets required to move on to the next phase or uh, to light up the next building, you're going to get different rewards. We will go through and I will show you guys uh, these rewards as well. So at 50 tickets, you're going to get some gold and extra dice components and Air Force refined components. Um, or I'm sorry, just Air Force components, not refined components. Uh, for 100 tickets, you're going to get gold, another uh, three dice, actually 10 universal coupons. At 150 tickets, you're going to get some more gold, dice, ammo, Air Force ammo. At 200, same idea, gold, dice, and then five golden officer statues. That'll be very nice. And then just like the Christmas one on the last section for 300 tickets, uh, you will be able to get a snowy tree base decoration, 500 gold, six dice, and then one refined component. And this event actually offers, I mean, relatively speaking, this is a completely free event. You don't have to spend money to get these plane tickets. And guys, these plane tickets are super, super easy to get. Uh, and you can get more than enough of these tickets uh, to get all the way through this board. So all you have to do to get through this board and to get all of these rewards is simply do uh, the bare minimum every single day to get they a lot of number of tickets, do your bunkers, collect your resources, buy some items, buy the even if you need to buy the cheapest items in the black market store, whatever that looks like for you guys, just do these these minimums every single day and you're going to have no problem 
uh, working your way all the way through the board. So again, not a not a new event, but just a new spin on a familiar event here with the Usher and the New Year event. Moving down the list here, uh, we are going to have uh, some more legendary Percy showroom events. We're going to have two uh, in the coming months. We're going to have one in January, one in February. We'll start with January's here. We are going to have a couple of different uh, and new items. We are going to have, obviously, some more officer stickers. Uh, it looks like a panda emote. Um, and then this is going to be the new base skin. It's called Misty Land. It's going to give HP of all troops 5%. And then tank and helicopter firepower is going to be of plus 5%. Looks like we're going to get a rocket launcher unit skin. It's called Knight Duke. Uh, it's going to increase the firepower of your rocket launcher troop by 5%. Uh, nothing real flashy, just kind of a pretty bare bones, you know, uh, spin on the, I guess, color scheme of the rocket launcher, so to speak. But it's actually, you know, kind of cool. Um Looks like we've got the Happy New Year uh, chat bubble, which is red. It looks like got some snow, some lights, and maybe some flowers here. Uh, we've got Ink Attack. Uh, this is going to be one of your base attack effects, as well as uh, Ink Blast. And then, um, of course, you're also going to be able to go through and get some of these base skins if you do not already have them for some of these uh, legendary... Uh, Currencies, these are going to be the, the avatar frames that are returning as well. If you don't have these, you are going to be able to buy these. If you've been around for a while, uh, you probably have most, if not all of these already. Base decorations, same idea. They're going to basically recycle through old base decorations. So if you don't have them and you need them to complete the, the uh, full range of, of items to get the additional buffs for base skins, things like that chat bubble, or I'm sorry, chat uh, emotes or whatever you want to call it. And then these are the resources that you can buy as well. So that is going to be in the uh, January Percy showroom. This is going to be the February Percy showroom. Uh, more officer emotes. Looks like we've got a Cupid emote here. We have got another super heavy tank skin. This is the True Love Defender. This is going to be 5% unit HP. If you guys uh, were a part of that first Percy showroom and got the gold super heavy skin, then you aren't going to really necessarily need this. I mean, you might want it for the for the aesthetic of it. If you don't have the gold, maybe you're going to have a chance to get this. They both offer the same uh, level of buffs. So, um, I you know, I'm, I'm really personally not interested in it. I'm more of a, along the lines of I'm interested in, you know, unit skins that are kind of more realistic looking true to the true to the time period and the unit itself. Obviously, I don't know many super heavy tanks or tanks in general that rolled around at this time period with gold on them, uh, but it is a little bit more realistic than uh, a bunch of hearts, you know, painted on to a super heavy skin, but to each their own. And again, if you're looking for just strictly buffs, this will give you the same amount of buffs as that. The base skin that's going to be coming with this one is going to be Caged Dream. This is going to be firepower for all troops of 5% and then artillery firepower of 5%. So pretty cool uh, base skin there. This is going to be a Sweet Words chat bubble. It's going to be red. It looks like it's got a little, uh, you know, pistol here on the side, musket, or I don't know what you technically call that. Maybe you guys can let me know that in the comments. Um, and then it's got some roses and some hearts. So if that's your thing. Then we've got a Shining Diamond base attack effect as well as a Petal Power. So, yeah, you've got that. Again, I'll be honest with you. I'm not, if I get it, you know, great, I guess. Um, I'm not really pushing for these things, though. I'm, you know, whatever. But it is cool. I mean, I do like the base skin, right? I really do like the base skin. And these, these attack things by no means are, I mean, they're great if you don't have them. Uh, you know, obviously, any kind of advantage you can get when you're facing an enemy is going to be very welcomed. Um, you know, I'm just saying out of all of the different attack, you know, animations that they've got, I probably would choose different ones before these. But again, to each their own. And then this is going to be the base skins that are going to be coming back or being recycled through um, this Percy showroom event in February. So you guys are going to be able, if you don't already have these, to acquire these. Same idea, frames here, you're going to be able to go through and get any of these frames that you may not already have if you wish to have them. Base decoration, same idea. Chat, you can go through, get any chat 
emotes if you don't have them already. And then here are some of the extra items you can purchase through the showroom event as well if you choose to do so. So that is going to be the Percy showroom for both January and February. All right, moving down the line here, we have got some new Theater of Conquest optimization I am on the test server, guys, so I am, I'm not able to actually access this um, on the test server, but I will read you guys all of the changes coming to the Theater of Conquest event. So kind of bear with me here while I work through this list, and we will get to the next phase where we'll be able to show you guys some more stuff. So for the Theater of Conquest optimization, there's going to be a new Conquest store. Uh, when version 6.2 is released, the Conquest Store will not be available to players who are in the Conquest Matchmaking Phase, Matchmaking Announcement Phase, Campaign Phase, Tally Phase, and Exit Phase. After version 6.2 is released, the Conquest Store will be available to players who are in the Warm Up Phase, Sign Up Phase, and to all those who restart the Conquest process. So basically, if you're in the... In, if you're in a active Conquest event, by the time this uh, update actually releases and goes live, this will not apply to you until the fresh event that you go into begins. So just super simple terms there. And then these are some of the points for this, this Conquest store. There are two types of currency in the Conquest store. There is Conquest Cash, and there's going to be Conquest um, Mission Cash. So for the Conquest Cash... You're going to, it's going to be earned through conquest missions, i.e. occupying strategic places on the map when the conquest ends, and then climbing the rankings in the fighting machine rankings. Then mission cash can be earned through conquest missions, alliance repute ranking, and then the conqueror event. So a couple of different ways to earn some conquest store currency there. So super simple terms to break that down for you. Conquest cash can be earned by occupying different buildings with your alliance within a theater of conquest, and then also fighting machine ranking. The higher in fighting machine ranking you are, the more conquest cash you're actually going to get. For mission cash, super simple way to think about this is just going to be basically through repute, uh, through individual repute, as well as um, alliance repute and the alliance conquer event ranking. So if you're an alliance that does well in that, then you're going to be in good shape. If you're not, then you might not get as much there. And then here's what the conquest store has to offer. It offers rare items such as refined components and Air Force refined components, but also unique unit skins, exclusive chat bubbles, and exclusive animated avatar frames. So it sounds like uh, we're going to have some more ways to get refined components, both ground and Air Force refined components, as well as some maybe cool chat bubbles and exclusive animated avatar skins. So I kind of like the... Uh, I don't really mess around with the chat bubbles too much. I've got some of them, um, but I just don't really mess around with it too much. But I do like cool avatar frames, honestly. I think uh, especially some of those animated ones do look pretty cool. So we'll see what they've got to offer there. Uh, this is going to be some changes to future Conquest events regarding Moscow and San Francisco. The opening times of some strategic places and Raven bunkers in the Moscow battlefield and the San Francisco battlefield have been changed. This will take effect to conquests that begin after the 6.2 update. So if you're currently, by the time this releases in a Moscow or San Francisco uh, battleground, this change will not take effect in your current conquest event. So don't worry there. Um, here is what's changing, though. The end day of blockhouses has been changed from the 14th day of the campaign phase to the 15th day. The end day of level 13 Raven Troops has been changed from the 15th day of the campaign phase to the 16th day. The end day of the map central building, i.e. the Kremlin, City Hall, Great Pyramid, etc. Uh, has been changed from the 17th day of the campaign phase to the 18th day. The end day of other Alliance settlements has been changed from the 18th day to the 19th day of the campaign phase. And then defeating level 36 through 50 Raven troops on the Conquest battlefield will no longer grant unit EXP or officer EXP. Uh, not really sure why they are removing the EXP from defeating Raven troops, but for level 36 through 50 Raven troops will no longer be granting in future Conquest events for Moscow and San Francisco uh, unit EXP or officer EXP. 
Uh, this is going to be a update that is geared more for new players, which will be hopefully helpful for the new players. If you are a player that's been around in the game for a while, this is not really applicable to you, but still definitely want to go through it in case you are a newer player. Uh, this is going to be new commander experience optimizations. Um, I it, it did have this on the test server. However, I have got everything set up on the test server, so I um, don't have those prompts anymore, but I will explain exactly how they work. So if you are a newer player, um, you will understand. And if you're a seasoned player, you'll at least understand what this actually is. Uh, so for the new commander experience, uh, there's going to be unit recommendation and officer recommendation features um, that have been added for new commanders. If your role is less than 14 days old, you will now see recommended units when deploying troops in your army panel. Units are uh, units that are recommended for beginners are easier to use and train, making them more suitable for new commanders. If your role is less than 14 days old, you will see recommended officers when assigning officers to a troop. So what that looks like, uh, just so you guys all are familiar with what this means. So whether it's a unit or an officer, uh, if it is a recommended unit, what they deem as a recommended unit or officer, there is going to be in the bottom right hand corner here, there's going to be a little glowing thumbs up that indicates that that is a recommended officer. Uh, or unit. So, and then same idea, you guys are going to be able to see here. Um, it does have, you, well, you can't see here, but same idea in the bottom of the officer uh, images here, it's going to have a little thumb that indicates uh, what is a preferred unit and officer. And then just so you guys have a full understanding, especially uh, if you've been around in the game a while, it is basically taking all the baseline officers within the game, like Spanner, Bloody Mary, so on and so forth. Those are all the baseline recommended officers that you are going to see within the game. So uh, uh, just a helpful, you know, nudge in the right direction for new players there. And then there is going to be for the elite commander event optimization. Again, this is still for new commanders and their experience. Um, it reduces the power requirement for some missions. It adjusts the rewards granted by missions, added time, added time limit skins and other rewards and reduced the power requirement to get decorations and avatar frames. If you have already claimed some of the rewards being, uh, if you've already claimed some of the rewards being adjusted, you will receive the newly added rewards via mail after the new version is released. So, what that is saying is that exclusive, the nobility manor base skin um, or the avatar frame things like that. I forgot it's been so long for me. I forgot what the power requirement is. I think it's like. I think it's like maybe 2.6 million or something like that within X amount of days, 14 days, some, seven days, something like that. I'm, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, if you guys do know, let me know in the comments below. But what it's saying is for some, some items like that, it's going to reduce the power requirements to get some of those things. And then it's also going to be adding some more limited time things like base skins to help people progress and to get stronger at a faster rate, but they are going to be limited time. So some new features that will probably be very helpful for newer players on newer servers. So moving on here, we have got uh, quick prototype enhancement. This is going to be a kind of quality of life, uh, very welcomed change. If you guys have been following any of my videos for any length of time now, um, I said this when we were kind of gearing up for the 5.0 update that if they had they introduced you know the quick leveling system and the quick modification system for units to where you can take your unit from level one to level 200 with basically just a click same idea if you've got enough components you can fully ma uh, modify a unit uh, with just a tap of a button so now they are introducing that for modern units in the enhancement process which is great it takes it's a pain in the butt if you have to reset a unit let's say you've got a main battle tank that's 9.2 and you're going offline and you want to move it to an arty right you had to reset your your main battle tank move all of those things over to your artillery unit do the whole enhancement process and it just took a while uh, so now they're going to speed that process up and the requirement to be able to do that is is pretty low um, it's once you reach VIP level 10, you will have the quick enhance option. Um, so for the modern units, so that is going to be very, very welcomed change there. Uh, the quick enhance button allows you to enhance all four sections of a prototype to 100% with a single tap. This feature allows you to easily upgrade a unit after resetting a unit. So again, kind of a quality of life, uh, streamlining a process there, which again is, I think going to be very welcomed for um, all players across Warpath. 
Uh, so we have got uh, section five here is going to be combat balance optimizations. The armor damage dealt by the main weapons of infantry of all star levels has been increased by 200%. So essentially, infantry doesn't matter what camp, all infantry is going to have an increase of 200% damage. So regardless of the star level. So basically where I'm going with this is they are going to really start uh, beefing up the infantry units pretty considerably and they're going to try to get them in the fold here as well because infantry is basically for the most part there's a few exceptions to this rule for some players but for the most part infantry has been pretty non-existent for most people in lineups but they're they're basically gearing up to make them so good that you can't ignore them at least that's my interpretation of this which depending on how you look at it may be good may be bad Time will tell, but at least it'll add a dynamic to the kind of uh, battlefield, so to speak. There's going to be there's going to be different ways people are going to progress their unit development now. So we'll see what that looks like as time goes on. Uh, unique camp perks have been added to the Vanguard and Martyrs Watch Infantry. So we're going to take you guys over here to the Advanced Combat. For those of you that have paid attention to the Infantry tab uh, at all, you will know that the three... First three big uh, researches here prior to the 6.2 update have been, uh, it says unknown. They didn't have any set of skills there uh, listed, so really nobody knew what they were or what they were going to offer. With the 6.2 update, they are now going to actually be in effect, and here's what they are. For Martyrs, Martyrs Watch Infantry normal attack damage uh, received is going to be reduced by 5%. For Vanguard, it's going to increase Vanguard infantry crit rate by 5%. And then for Camp Liberty, Camp Liberty infantry smoke bombs last for an extra uh, quarter of a second, essentially. So that is going to be the three new additions to the infantry tech tree under the advanced combat section there as well. Uh, unique camp perks have been added to Vanguard and Martyr's Watch infantry. Vanguard Division Infantry deal higher armor damage. Martyr's Watch Infantry have higher damage resist in bunker mode. So depending on which camp of infantry you've got, you could, or if you don't have one and you want to build one, kind of put those things, um, you know, in your back pocket, keep them in mind, depending on the, the use that you want to have your infantry play. If you plan on maybe having it more towards base defense or something like that, or in the field, maybe you look at going to Vanguard because it's going to have more armor damage. And if you're wanting to do more maybe like tanking bases with infantry or something like that, maybe Martyrs is your choice because it's going to have uh, more damage resist while in bunker mode. And also the addition of these infantry changes is going to make officers such as Iron Baston uh, potentially more appealing as well. So it's going to change if this takes effect and it is as effective uh, as I think it's going to be. It's going to really change the kind of strategic approach that players are going to be taking with their officers and unit development. So... It could add a fun dynamic to the game, but again, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see exactly how people use them in uh, actual combat. So that is the gist of all of the infantry. Uh, this is going to be a welcomed addition to you helicopter players. So for helicopters, um, it is going to shorten the time it takes for helicopters to fire the first round. Helicopters can now fire the first round faster. So basically what that means for super simple terms is the helicopters, right? The advantage of helicopters is they can fly over terrain. So you don't have to bob and weave over different obstacles. You can go over rivers, etc. cetera. Uh, the disadvantage to helicopters to this point is the fact that before they can actually start fighting in combat, they have to descend back down and then they can engage from there. So there's kind of a little window of time from the time the helicopter gets to a destination before it can actually enter combat while it descends. This is going to make that process faster, and I know it's probably going to be a very welcomed change to you helicopter players. You're going to not be as vulnerable on your descent for as long. It's going to be able to get fire. Uh, it's going to start being able to fire at a faster rate. So that will be very welcomed. How much faster, I do not know. We'll have to wait until this, this update actually goes live to be able to tell. Uh, but again, anything I think at this point would help, and I think probably all players that run helicopters uh, will appreciate this change as well. And then so here is uh, section six. This is going to be the last section. This is going to be further optimizations. Uh, we have got number one, uh, first completion rewards have been added 
for some op center levels. Universal coupons, if you have already completed these stages, you will receive the newly added rewards via mail after the new version is released. So once 6.2 actually goes live, you will be assuming you've done any of the uh, uh, op center missions, you will be receiving any rewards that they have added for those, even if you have already completed them in the past. So you won't be missing out on any rewards there. Uh, number two, the duration of the starter pass has been changed from five to three days. Um, number three, you can now change the name of army groups. You can change the name of an army group in the details page once the army group has been successfully created. And I will be honest with you, this is actually going to be, while it may seem like a subtle change, uh, this will actually be a very welcome change. And I'll give you an example. This happened to me literally last night. I was running a army group for repute. We're currently in the Cairo theater of conquest and I was running a group for repute. I was doing bunkers. And at the time, uh, up till that point, um, they, we had only had level 10 bunkers released, but so I made a group, I named it fast tanks, level 10s only level 10 bunkers only lo and behold that unit 11 bunkers had released at reset that night and I had not paid any attention, and so my group said level 10s, even though I was actually only targeting level 11s at that point because they had been released. Uh, so in order for me to have to rename my group prior to this update, I would have had to, to close my group out, reform it, and add the correct name to it. Now, in that scenario, or in any scenario, you don't have to change uh, the name or you don't have to close the group to change the name of the group. You can change it in real time and you can change it to whatever you want. So let's say um, you are running a fast tank group and your your alliance may need somebody to start running a, a maybe an artillery group or a super heavy group. You can go ahead and start removing those fast tank units. You can start, uh, you know, bringing in the new set of unit types that you need, change the name to super heavy so people know what group you're running and what you need. And you can go ahead and kind of rebuild a group in real time like that as well. So a small change, but I think it's going to be over time a very welcome change and something that will be um, really good for people to be able to be more, more versatile, so to speak, uh, at a faster rate with their army groups in combat. Uh, officer labels now include more detailed information of what unit types they specialize in, and here's what that means. So for I'm going to use Sergeant Spanner as an example here. So prior to the 6.2 update going live, right, you can see at the top, uh, right above uh, Sergeant Spanner's name and all the officers have it here, Angel of Light, War Machine. Uh, they've all got it, but they've all got these little tags that indicate what unit type they are uh, geared for and so on. But when you click on it, like prior to the 6.2 update for Sergeant Spanner specifically, when you click on it, it says expert at leading tanks, right? So it's, it's a broad kind of idea on what he's actually good at. It just says tanks. It doesn't say what kind of tanks. Uh, so they have updated this to be a lot more specific and detailed for players, which will probably be good, probably, you know, mainly towards newer players that are still not super familiar with units. If you're a seasoned player at this point, you pretty much know what officers go with what units and what what makes the most sense. But again, this is this, you know, the more information that players can have to make the better, more informed decision is going to be good. Uh, but for example, it went from expert at leading uh, tanks to expert at leading light tanks tank hunters, medium tanks, heavy tanks, super heavy tanks, main battle tanks, and helicopters. So that's just an example. They've kind of done that and gone through that with all units. Um, and here's an example, uh, or I'm sorry, not units, officers. Uh, expert at leading infantry. Uh, you know, infantry is, I guess, kind of an exception. Let's see what um, War Machine's got. Highly skilled at leading all kinds of ground forces. Um, so it, it appears that maybe they have updated some of these descriptions uh, for some, and then Maybe not so much for others. Let's see if maybe Lady Justice has got one. Uh, no. So I guess maybe this is just, okay, here we go. Valkyrie's got a more detailed one expert at leading all of the same things as Spanner. So it appears some of them have been updated. Maybe some of them have not. Or there may be a reason that some of them have not been or don't appear to be. But that is uh, what they're doing in regards to more detailed information for officers on their tags. Uh, this one is going to be, depending on where you're from in the world, what language you speak, this will be applicable to you. Uh, the They have added Korean voice lines for awakened officers, so I'll show you what I mean. You guys are all familiar, right? When you pull up your officers tab, click on an officer, right? They all say something, right? I'll click on War Machine. We'll see what he has to say. So... 
click on officers. Doesn't matter which officer. When you click on an officer for the first time, uh, it does have some kind of, um, you know, saying that it, it, and there's a few of them for every officer and they cycle through them. Um, they're all in English, but now they are adding for those voice prompts. They are adding, uh, Korean voice lines, uh, to those. So if you speak Korean, then that'll be, uh, you know, probably pretty welcomed for you. Uh, this will be good. This will be good for the channel, for me doing testing videos to bring you guys information. And this will also be good for you guys to have a more detailed, uh, look and picture on what your units are doing and how they're performing in real time. So you guys can make changes if needed accordingly. Uh, battle reports, uh, for both attackers and defenders will now include the amount of damage of units and officers negated by shields. So it'll just add another layer of data there. Again, this is going to be very good for myself and ultimately as an extension for you guys, when we do officer testings, unit testing, things like that, we're going to be able to test and get more data in a condensed version, which will be, again, very good. I'll be able to bring you guys even more accurate information. So that will be very nice here on the channel. But again, if you guys are one of those players that really takes a hard look at all your battle reports to see what's what's performing well, what's not, what may be a good combination, if you're you know kind of mixing and matching in real time, you'll at least have that opportunity to see that information. Now, regardless, regardless if you are the attacker or the defender. And then bombing time. Uh, stats for bomber units have been renamed from, uh, they have been renamed from, or to bombing intervals to better reflect what the stat actually does. So they are going to be changed from bombing time stat to bombing interval stat. Um, so if you are either a bomber player or maybe you're in an alliance that is real heavy with bombers and you guys do kind of coordinated bombing runs or bombing attacks, this is going to give you a little bit more of a real time detailed information, literally to the second of when bombers arrive, bombing intervals, etc. So that'll be good just to help kind of coordination of bombing runs there as well. Uh, and then the last item here on further optimizations, and this will wrap us up here for all of the 6.2 um, update notes, is if you have unlocked a modern unit, you can now obtain refined component materials and value investment plans. If you have already, if you already have an active investment plan, the change will take effect the next time you purchase a plan. So let's take a look. So when you guys go over into um, events here, the value investment, you guys are all familiar with it probably at this point. It's been in the game for quite a while now. You guys are going to be able to obtain refined component material pieces through this value investment now. So the plan, um, we'll click on it. You've got all these different options. You can get the 99 cent one, the 199, 299. You guys can see it. Or you guys can get the whole shebang, select all, for 15 bucks, basically $14.99. It's going to be a seven day uh, plan. It's going to give you guys the gold plus the additional gold if you complete all the missions. Um, it's going to give you guys armor wrenches, VIP, uh, but you guys are going to get three refined component material pieces at the end of the seven days if you go with the $14.99 plan. However, there are still options if you like to do a, a cheaper plan, right? You can do the $5.99 plan. At the end of the seven days, you're going to get two refined component materials. And then I believe the 399 plan, if that's kind of your jam or whatever that looks like for you, uh, for 399 at the end of the seven days, you are going to be able to get one refined component material pieces. 399 is the cheapest pack you can get any refined component material piece in, though. So you can't get one from the 299, the 199 or the 99 cent one. So you have to at least get the 399 uh, investment plan for that week to, to be able to get any refined component material pieces. And if you get all of them, just do the select all for 15 bucks, you're going to go ahead um, and get the three total. So I guess theoretically, depending on what you wanted from this value investment plan, um, you know, you could, if you wanted to get, if money's really not an object for you and you want to just get the whole shebang, you know, you can certainly do that for $14.99 a month. You're going to get it all. But if you are uh, really only interested in just the refined component material pieces and, and want to save a little bit of money, you could theoretically do just the $5.99 pack and the $3.99 pack. And that would save you you know, about five bucks there. What is that? Six, seven, eight, nine, something like that. Uh, so you could get, of course, from 599, you'd get the two refined component material pieces 
and then 399 you'd get the one which would bring you to the grand total of three that you'd get from the 15 or the 1499 investment pack so you can divvy it up like that if you want to save a little money and you're really only interested in the refined component material pieces you can do that save yourself a few bucks but again if if you want all of the items and money's really not uh, an issue for you then by all means go ahead and do the 1499 and get the whole shebang so really ultimately kind of what makes sense for you guys as individuals um so there is going to be that addition to the value investment plans so with that being said, guys, that is from top to bottom all of the changes coming in the 6.2 update, guys. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me, sticking around for this video. I know it was a little bit lengthy. Um, it wasn't probably just super exciting and jam-packed with action, uh, but I did want to make sure I got you guys uh, all of this information as accurately and quickly as I possibly can uh, prior to this update going live. So that is all of the changes expected to be made in the 6.2 update coming in up so some good quality of life changes there some more ways to get different items different resources things like that hopefully you guys are looking forward to these changes on the way let me know what you guys think about this update in the comments below and then as always if you guys have enjoyed this video found some value out of this video uh please consider hitting a like on the on the video subscribe to the channel if you have not already as both of those things help myself and the channel out tremendously and then as always if you have access to discord and are not already in our community discord server the link to that is going to be in the description of the video below and we would love to have you guys come join us over there with that being said guys i appreciate it and we'll catch you guys on the next one